This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I will be talking about them more at the end of the video. So when a company takes their logo and they change it again and again and again throughout the years, we call that a company's logo evolution. And you're gonna notice that with almost every single, at least American company, this logo evolution is going towards simplification. They take this logo that has some level of complexity and we're getting rid of all the shapes, we're getting rid of all the colors until it's just this very basic kind of oppressive looking symbol. And a great example of this is the Windows logo, which actually used to look pretty abstract back in the day in the 90s. Uh, but then we got this thing that looked pretty techy. You know, we got some colors in there. We got a bit of waves, some particles. And as the years progressed, we got rid of the particles. We got rid of the waviness. We got rid of the color. And I predict that pretty soon we're gonna get rid of any skew. So it's just gonna be this kind of flat on image. We're gonna get rid of the lines, the color. It's just gonna be a gray square. So you can see the point. Everything is tending towards simplification. And I thought, you know, companies are doing this with their logos. Why can't we redesign other things? Let's take a classic example of the yin yang symbol, something that has been the same pretty much forever. We can take this and simplify it like this. Let's get rid of the wave. Who needs a wave too complicated? And these dots that are off to the corner is very strange. Let's center them and let's actually connect them because why not? Why do we have to have two dots? You can have the same point illustrated by just dividing it in half. And while we're there, we don't need the circle. We definitely don't need this kind of high contrast line in there. We'll just make a gradient and fuck the gradient. We'll just make it a gray circle. So you see the points. Pretty much everything can be simplified and I want to take that idea to the extreme in this video. So in particular, what I want to simplify or actually just redesign or give ideas for today is the QR code, which stands for quick read code. If you haven't seen it before, it's basically this thing that's attached to every single object. More and more things are getting their own QR codes. Pretty soon we're each gonna have our own QR code, probably. I mean, it's kind of a weird dystopian thing, but why not? Why don't we each have our own QR code? Either way, um, it's this thing to redirect you to links and whatever, and it always pretty much looks the same. It's the square with black and white squares inside of it. It has these things in the corner for your phone to know, oh, this is a QR code, and that's just what it is. Really, the only variety you're getting is in the size of the QR code. It's always a square, but you can have a small one or a big one, and some companies, you know, slap an image in the middle. But basically, this is a thing that has not changed, as far as I know, in forever. So in this video, I'm going to make five proposals, five dumb fucking proposals for how we can uh, reinvent the QR code. Let's go. So my first innovation is this idea of aspect ratio. So we have a square that can get bigger and smaller why can't we have rectangles? You know, it's 2022, things come in all shapes and sizes. I want QR codes that can be tall rectangles or in the other direction in terms of width. So it doesn't have to be a one by one aspect ratio. In fact, we can take this aspect ratio and make it so ridiculous, like so vertical that uh, basically it's just a bunch of black and white squares. We take it and we stretch it. So it's almost like a bar code and we could scan this with a little thing. We've invented the barcode. My second innovation is we don't need this thing to be a square or even a different aspect ratio. Why don't we have a QR code that is different shapes? For example, we could have a triangular QR code. Isn't that fun? Isn't that a zany? Or maybe we could have a hexagonal QR code. And you're probably wondering why am I saying triangles and hexagons and squares? Why can't we have a, a pentagon QR code? Turns out you can't because if you take a pentagon and then put one next to it and next to it and next to it, you can't really partition the plane out of pentagons, you get overlapping. Whereas with uh, hexagons, squares, and triangles, these are the only shapes that actually partition the plane. Everything else doesn't work. But my point is we don't need it to just be a square that looks dumb. My third innovation is for the blind people who cannot see QR codes. So we need a way to take this image basically and turn it into audio. Here's how I propose we do it. So basically again, a QR code is made up of a bunch of squares over and over and over again. And we say for each of these, uh, let's just assign a frequency. So one of these could be like 200 hertz, another one could be 300, doesn't matter. And we make it so that if a tile is black, it doesn't play the frequency, but if a tile is white, it does play it. And then it kind of takes all these frequencies and plays them all at once, depending on its QR code. So here's one QR code, <coughs> and here's another. <coughs> Uh, using the audio feature. I think this one's gonna be a big hit. My fourth innovation is a technology I'm calling 3D QR or three-dimensional uh, QR codes. And the way I'm gonna do this is you're thinking, oh, you're just gonna have a cube of a QR code. No, what I'm actually gonna do is a bit weird. So just follow along. I'm gonna take a QR code that already exists. And instead of these like white and black tiles or whatever, I'm gonna give them color. And you might be thinking, okay, we've randomized the color. In what way is this 3D QR? Well, listen to this. A color is basically some combination, any color is a combination of red, 
green and blue. So for example, purple would look like this, orange would look like this, whatever. Meaning color is in some sense this three-dimensional quantity and three-dimensional space. So we can take our QR code that is now colored and transition it in this, into this 3D color space and kind of represent what that would look like. So instead of seeing a normal QR code, we give it its coloring and then we see it in 3D. Uh, this is gonna be super useful for those visual learners that need to, to see it in 3D. So 3D QR technology could be a big deal. Fifth innovation. This is one I'm actually quite excited about because I think nobody's thought about this one before. Instead of a QR code that again is quick read code, what about an LR code, a long read code, something that deliberately takes a long time to read because we're always like rushing and we're just kind of moving through this life a bit too quickly with all this technology. Sometimes you just want to sit and look at a code and just really think about it. So here's how I propose it. Kind of a naive, simple solution is you take a pre-existing QR code, you add some like randomization so it's always changing over time. Maybe there's some glitching and it's always moving around the screen. This makes it so that it's a long read, right? You really need to scan it. but. Here's what I propose, I think this is better. Instead of a QR code that is already populated, what we can do is we can start off with a white square, and if you ever heard of the game of Snake, where you have the snake and it's eating apples and it's dropping turds and all this, we can have the game of Snake populate our QR code. This way, uh, you can't really scan it until the thing is done, so it's really a long read. You have to watch this game of Snake, be like, huh and only then can you scan it. So this is the long read code. I think this is gonna be a big deal. And I know for this video, I said there's only five innovations, but I lied, I have a sixth innovation for you for free. You didn't even expect this. Instead of the QR code, I'm just gonna get rid of all the tiles and then we're gonna replace it with this image, uh, which is the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. And if you haven't heard about Squarespace, you are in so much luck because you could have some random dude tell you what it is or you could have me tell you what Squarespace is. So let me tell you. If you're looking to make a website, but you don't wanna code, you don't wanna do any of this nonsense it's just too much work. Squarespace is a service that will let you make not just a website, but a beautiful one with ease, with speed, with all of this. My website, www.cgmatter.com, I've had it for a while, it has been built and is maintained by Squarespace. Uh, so there's an example of just a quick website that you can whip up together. I know nothing about HTML or any of this. I just use Squarespace. And when you use Squarespace, you just get a bunch of features that you would probably love access to, like analytics. So you can see who is going to your website, where are they from, how many people, stuff like this. And then also, email campaign so you can send a personal or a branded message to the people that go to your website. So it's an all-in-one package. And while Squarespace is already super affordable at an annual subscription at under $10 a month, I'm here to make that deal sweeter. If you click my link in the description, you can save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. So uh, thank you Squarespace for sponsoring and I hope uh, the people in charge of QR codes, the guys in the suits, take my innovations to heart because I, I thought a lot about them.